$85 ticket in violation of the bylaw. I see. Oh my god. So you just come here every morning? And no, I was thinking that they would be busted today. So they're giving out tickets? Yeah, we got our third ticket today. And and what what are the tickets about? Uh, for having a temporary abode after seven o'clock. But they're not moving you? Uh no. What? It, well, it it seems like uh, they they can arrest people for having multiple tickets. Uh, oh. And so we're we're expecting that since since the second ticket that they weren't going to arrest just for the offense itself. Uh, probably because the crown had previously refused twice to prosecute the seven o'clock rule in criminal court. So the city's way around that is to arrest us for a civil charge of collecting too many bylaw tickets. I see. And when do you anticipate how long well, do they uh, let we that were end? anticipating today when they gave us the third ticket that that would count as multiple tickets. Uh, don't know if they're... Yeah, don't know if they're just going to come at any moment or if they're waiting another day or if they're coming at all or... So you're willing to go to jail again? Oh, absolutely. It, it'll, it'll be... A simple process, just getting another trial date, all that. And uh, you're pretty comfy here then? It's been beautiful. Yeah. It's, it's quite sturdy actually. It's yeah. stood up to two assaults and a windstorm. Assault? Like human assault? Yeah. Uh oh, who's doing that? Uh, just one drunk fellow who oh. was, I think maybe even uh, someone from the police or something, seeing how far I would go. Oh, interesting. Were you alone? Uh, yeah. Oh, it's a bit scary. You know what? Hi. Good morning. Are you getting supportive people around too? Oh, it's been amazing. Yeah? Yeah, constantly, you know. Yeah. Good. About 95% about of all kudos have been wonderful. Good. Good, good. What do you think, David? You want to say anything? No, it's, it's, it's all good. Okay. It was the support team, the support network. Yeah, yeah, good, very good. I mean, the, part of the reason we're standing here today is because you brave souls, uh, you know, did the stood it out at uh, Cridge Park there, right? Yeah, and I think that you know that you know since the ruling or since the bylaw was struck down, there hasn't been any significant ten cities that have been a problem. So that's what at, like in the world, you mean? In, in Victoria, yeah. like you know, since the ban was taken away, there hasn't been like huge uh, disorderly tent cities going on. Right. And uh, for me, it's, it, it goes back to uh, taking care of yourself, being able to uh, sleep outside at night instead of the shelter. You, you know, don't like shelters? I went to the Street Link shelter a couple weeks ago oh, well, to look for someone, also, and uh, it was absolutely uh, so disgusting. Nobody would want to sleep there. Really? There were needles everywhere. And, Is that right, eh? Yeah, it was really bad, and, and that's what I remember Street Link being, uh, an uh, unsafe place for me to be. And that's what brought me outside, is when I couldn't handle it at Street Link anymore and the Salvation Army, I turned it outside. And then uh, and the Cridge Park was a welcome place? Well, the first night I walked uh, over the Blue Bridge and a friend and I went there. He came to help me set my tent up. And the next morning I realized that my tent was on a bed of needles. Uh -oh. It was dark and I had no flashlight. And I had set my tent up where there were needles everywhere. Uh -huh. I, under my tent, everywhere. I didn't get poked, but wow, that's lucky. when I knew it was unsafe to find a, a small crevice and just stick yourself to hide. Right. You know, it's better to, you know, like a man would, you know, put up his tent, sleep for the night. You know, if if someone is is in bed by nine, it is reasonable to get up at seven. But I think there has to be, you know, some, you know, 
provisions as far as if it's raining. If it's raining on a Sunday, it's unrealistic for anybody to be sleeping and get up and be yeah. able to keep the stuff dry while they pack up. Well, I'm trying to find a place after dark. Like you say, you could end up on a bed of needles or anything like that. So from Critch Park, where did you go, Simon? Uh, from Critch Park, I actually moved into an apartment with Andrew and I stayed there uh, for almost three years. Oh, cool. And, uh, it was unfortunate I just lost my apartment because oh. I was uh, I had to rely on someone else to come up with the month the rent every month and my rent's paid this month but my roommate didn't pay the rent. Uh oh. So right now for me it, it's it's uh, important that I find <coughs> housing that I can be by myself and have my you know I don't, if it was the size of that box I wouldn't care as long as I was you know I could do my own routine and right. and I'm able to get up in the morning. Right, just have your own space. Yeah. And, well, and that's what a tent city provides. I mean, it's not the most comfortable environment, but at least it's your own space, right? No, and the, and, this, and the shelters are really not set up for people to get out of their position. When someone's in a, in a street shelter, they're hopeless. Right. And if you want to get up in, in the morning to go and look for work, you're not allowed to eat. You have to be in a lineup at Street Link between 8 o'clock and 8.15 at a bowl of porridge. Right. So if you're up at 6, you're, you're a go-getter. You want to get, you're, you're looking at, you know, not eating. You know, and not having the basics to even get to work in the room. Right. And then you got to be in the lineup to get your bed the next night, it's, right? It's really degrading. Like, you got to be in there at 10 o'clock with a bunch of other people and be like, me, me, me. Right, you know? right. And, uh, yeah. Whereas me, if you just had your own space and then you could come and go and you know it's safe. I tell you, my around. life, having housing has, you know, not only did I kick drugs, but I end up, uh, you know, studying and, and uh, passing the missions exam to get to university. Right, well, and I, oh, good for you, Simon, that's Definitely. awesome. And I think, I mean, City Hall and lots of other people, they talk about housing, 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 oh yeah, housing, 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 but until then, There hasn't you been know? any new housing built here, and from what I heard, there's 4,000 el elderly people, like, for, for elderly, uh, like they're on a waiting list for low-income elderly housing, and the rents are ridiculous. Yeah. You know, Eight hundred bucks for a one-bedroom apartment. Yeah, that's just crazy. not realistic. And and I think until that's kind of until we you know reinvest in infrastructure, you know, like if we're going to double the population, you have to double the hospitals, double the shelter beds, and all the stuff has to be built up. And it seems to me people have been living here lavishly, right, driving around their Rolls Royce vehicles and BMWs on our expenses because it was an easy grab for them. They got housing at a quarter of the price, and the people that they have voted in over the years has, it's, you know, real estate skyrocketed. Our investment, you know, uh, things are are going down the tubes. You know, RSPs and bank investments, and I think that. If it's true that 75% of the people in Canada live paycheck to paycheck, we're going to see more people not being able, to, like unemployment insurance is not going to cover someone's $2,500 mortgage. Right. So when these people lose their jobs, I think it's going to yeah. be an eye-opener yeah. for a lot of us. Yeah, well, and it's happening in the States. I think there's more and more tent cities in the States now as a result, right? So, yeah. Well, he's a champion, our David.